Longtime viewers of the channel know that I'm a fan of Orient and Orient Star. And I think one of the most underrated Orient Stars out there is the one I'm wearing, which is the Outdoor. It's a lesser known pilot field watch hybrid from Orient. Think Explorer meets Flieger. In fact, during the original review, I think I called it the Explorient. And in a lot of ways, it's also an alternative to the SIN 556A, which also has a similar feel. If you haven't seen the review, go check it out. It's one of the dual reviews I did with Dave a while ago. Now, at this point, I'm sure some of you are really confused as to why I'm talking about Orient Star, when this is supposed to be a review of the new Draken Peregrine. And that's simply because the Peregrine is a very similar watch to the Outdoor, one which seems to take a lot of what I liked about the Outdoor and improves upon it, including the Power Reserve Indicator. Trust me, it's in there. You just gotta look for it. Now, before we get to all the nitty gritty, I do need to point out that the watch we're gonna look at today is a prototype that was lent into the channel. So all your standard prototype warnings apply. And the only major change that I know about is gonna to be to the clasp, because there was actually an issue with the prototype's clasp where it sort of locked into place. Long story, I don't really wanna get into it, but I do wanna mention it for transparency. It was kind of a weird mistake during manufacturing, but since it's not going to be in the production model, there's no sense in going into detail. That said, let's talk specs. For this one, Draken is going with a 42mm by 49mm case. And before the whole it should be smaller crowd chimes in, know that it is already smaller than the original Paragon which came out in 2018. And that one I think is a 44mm. Now, this one with the 42 by 49 should fit a wide variety of people. But if you happen to be in the Slim Wristed Club, you might want to be a little cautious. Meanwhile, total thickness is just over 13 millimeters, and that does include the exhibition case back and a flat sapphire crystal. It's got a loom screw down crown and 100 meters of water resistance, meaning it's just about ready for anything. And that's really the whole point of a watch like this, that it's easy to read, yet still tough enough for most of life's adventures. Rounding everything out, it's a solid 170 grams on its bracelet, give or take a link or two, a 22 millimeter lug width, and it's all powered by the Miyota 9130. Which honestly was my first question when Draken approached me to do a review on it. I saw the power reserve at the bottom, the crown over at the left, and I was like, what's going on here? What's under the hood? So this is a more unusual member of the 9000 series, but it's still going to be high beat and a 40 shower power reserve. So all good stuff. And that also includes how it wears on the wrist. It may be a tad heavy here, but on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it's overall nice and comfortable for a 42. And a lot of that I think is thanks to the taper of the bracelet and its female end links. A 49 millimeter lug to lug is a little longer than I prefer, but the female end links compensate for that by immediately conforming to your wrist. Now, overall, I'd say it wears true to that 42 millimeter size, but visually, visually it's a little larger, a lot of which is thanks to the thin bezel and expansive dial. So yes, I know I told you guys to hold off on commenting, but they probably could have gone a little smaller here, but it is what it is and variety is the spice of life. One of the more interesting design choices, at least for me is the case, it's an all business, no fancy touches or frills, all brush tool watch case. But I found the overall geometry interesting, as the clean bezel and the midline have a nice organic curvy flow to them, which then abruptly ends in these very sharp angular lugs. It's interesting, and it's something you definitely notice when you look at the side profile. Yet head on, and those angular lugs seem to drop into the background leaving your focus more on the circular brushing of the bezel and the expansive dial. And as a side note here, I'm not really sure how much AR they used on the crystal or if it's a higher grade of crystal, but whatever they did here works because there's very little glare or reflection with it. The dial always came across clean and clear, remarkably so. Then you get to the crown. It's oversized with some really aggressive knurling to it, making it one that's really easy to get a hold of and use. But it is over at the nine, which is always an interesting choice. Now, I don't particularly mind it over there, but I know that it can be a bit divisive with some. Yet I think it's worth pointing out here that it's more of a necessity with the movement, that if they wanted the power reserve at the bottom, then the crown needed to be over at the left. So again, it is what it is. And it does give the watch a very distinct look. 
And staying with the divisive side of things, we can't forget that on the other side of the watch, Draken has its name etched into the case. And this is something I'm not a fan of, never have been, whether I've seen it on Invicta or Squale or wherever. And I've always jokingly referred to them as tramp stamps, and I gotta say it here too. So obviously I'd prefer a cleaner look if it wasn't there, but I know a lot of people don't mind it. And for me, it's not really a deal killer either. Now, let's talk about the dial. And I think it's interesting to point out here that there's going to be four different versions of the Peregrine. Two white, two black, with one variant having this style layout, and one of the other being more of a classic Type B Flieger. But for this one, the Type A Black, this is the one that's more of a field pilot watch hybrid. A bit Explorer and a bit Flieger all mixed together, just like the Orient Star Outdoor and the Sin 556A where here it's a matte black dial complete with Arabics at the cardinal points, and then other block indices for the other. And one thing that I really like here with the Peregrine is just the level of depth the dial has compared to those others. Where the center is slightly sunken, the Arabics and the chapter ring are painted on, and then the bar indices are applied, creating this stepping up multi-layer effect, and some really interesting depth to take in. It's also very easy to read, with the matte black and large white indices. Everything here comes across clearly and distinctly, which is the whole point of a field or pilot's watch. Time at a glance. I also appreciate the small splashes of blue here. Now, the Orient Star and the regular 556 do have more of a classic monochrome look, but I do prefer just a little splash of color. And here, there's just enough color to make things interesting, but not so much that it takes over the design. The blue on the second hand catches your eye as it moves around, and the triangles on the chapter ring help to focus and orientate your eyes with the dial. Meanwhile, the red on the power reserve just reminds you it's there. And the power reserve here is really nicely done. Now, I know not everyone likes power reserves, but I'm someone that does. So I may be in the minority here. But I gotta say, for those of you who don't like it, that this is the subtlest power reserve I've ever seen. It doesn't jump out at you like the Orient Stars, and it's one you almost have to look for. I also like that it's done just underneath a date. If you're gonna interrupt the flow and replace an Arabic for the design, you might as well take full advantage and throw everything in there. Helping to maintain a cleaner dial, and in this case, I think there's a great amount of symmetry with what they did. Loom here is also great. And I love the design aspect of it as well, where the Arabics are in blue while the hands and the other indices are in green. Plus, for just a brief while, the date and the power reserve also have a blue glow. Now, the blue components do fade out a little quicker than I'd like. But the green here, the green is in it to win it, as it easily outlasts the standard Seiko Diver, and I think it's even better than my Orient Star Outdoor. As for the bracelet and strap options, I believe you're gonna have a choice between a bracelet or the sailcloth strap. For me, I think I like the look of the watch on that green sailcloth strap better, but my overall choice would be the bracelet if you bought one. And other than that clasp issue I mentioned before, it's a good bracelet. It's a no frills design, but solid, comfortable, and well-made. Solid links, solid build clasp, and solid female end links with a quick release. Plus, good taper for added comfort. Now, the inside edges of the bracelet were a little sharp while handling it, but it's not something I ever noticed while wearing it. So, overall, good design choice for a tool watch. As for price and value, I think full retail will be $599 on a bracelet, with a pre-order price of $479, and then a little bit less if you just want it on the sale cloth. And right now, I think $479 is a good price for a solid tool watch with a high beat Miyota in it. And from what I've seen, that's about the same price you'd pay for an Orient Star Outdoor. And as much as I like the Outdoor, I think this one is a better buy when it comes with a bracelet. Bottom line, it's a great solid tool watch. One where what you see is really what you get. With its size and design, this is not a subtle watch on the wrist. It's a tool watch that comes across as more of a sledgehammer than, say, a scalpel. Which, I gotta say, is the whole point of a watch like this. Pilot's watches and field watches are supposed to be easy to read. Like I said, time at a glance. And the Peregrine accomplishes this with just enough other little fine touches to keep it distinct and interesting in the world of watches. 
So great watch, check it out more if you're interested. And overall, it's an interesting micro brand alternative to say a Sin 556, or at least this Type A version. The Type B is one that stays more true to its Flieger roots. But as usual, let me know your thoughts down below on the watch, or if you can think of one that does it better for less. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, really helps the channel out. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.